And as we've seen time and again through so many videos, the sheer panic that set in as people ran for cover, many of them leaving their belongings and running for their lives. Stephen Graves spoke to people who were there, and he joins us now. And Stephen, we were talking with Dana just a minute ago about some of the stories that we're hearing from people who are coming back to gather their belongings. And I know you've heard a number of these very powerful stories. That's right, Joe. And if we go a little earlier than that, we're talking people running in terror, not really having anywhere to go. So I talked to some people who had neighbors around here, open their doors for them. And if we look down here, you can just see how just intense this was because people left coffee cups right now here behind me. You can see lawn chairs. This is on Central Avenue where people were not in the middle of what happened, but they're just running as well, right? You hear those gunshots, so you just continue to run. And then behind me here is this line of lawn chairs. Beyond that, you can see a stuffed animal, a Sonic the Hedgehog, Hedgehog animal there. And that gives you just a reminder that there were children here, many of them. A guy who just walked up to pick things up said this was the worst day of his life. His daughter was on the opposite side of the parade. So imagine being a parent on this side, hearing what's going on, not knowing how to get to your daughter. I talked to some parents who also said that they had their children dropped off by strangers who were maybe in their preteens who knew where they lived. They were flagging down for help. They got dropped off at their homes. And again, people coming tonight to pick up their things are just processing this venting. I want you to hear from one dad who had a two-year-old daughter and a four-year-old daughter Listen to what he had to tell me when he tried to get his stuff this evening. So this started off as a child's parade and a pet parade. So when we came down, you know, it was so like Fun. wholesome, right? Yeah. Like kids waving at each other. There were dogs. It was, you know, the whole, most wholesome scene you can imagine. Grandparents and then minutes like I've got a photograph of me crossing where it happened. Exactly the exact spot. Literally about four minutes before this happened, like so we were so close to it. It's just horrifying to think, you know. So with him, he was one of the people who did run to a house. They let him in. The people at that house, they gave him water, a cell phone because he did not have his here. He had to try to connect with his wife who had his other daughter. And they finally got in touch with each other after three hours. Take a look here again. You can see the sunscreen here, the water bottles, a book. This was a time of relaxation, a time of fun turned into terror here. Another teenager I talked to said that he had to be let in. He ran through the woods. These are people from all over the North Shore who came here for a good time, turned into horror. But within that, within the horror, we do have some thankfulness, some strangers here who are helping out each other in this very terrible time. Joe, Erica. Yeah, it's, it's incredible to hear how people respond to this in so many ways, Stephen. And it sounds to me like beyond the, the sheer terror of what was happening and the fear of not being able to connect with your family members, at least in some cases for hours, it was also the uncertainty of exactly what was going on. You must have heard that from so many people. Exactly. And that man you just heard from, that father, he initially went to a nearby Starbucks. He describes dozens of people in there. And within that, they had to try to find a way to get out of that situation. But if you're being told that a shooter is out there, you don't know if you could encounter him or her at some point. So what they did was they made sure that they were in a safe space. And these homes had a lot of people in them, right? These strangers just opening up these doors and them not knowing what is happening, they had to find out through Twitter, a lot of them, that the place they were at just moments before six people were killed, multiple injured in a 4th of July parade. So just, it's really tough traumatizing as you can imagine. All right, Stephen Graves, thank you for that.